I don't like to make any distinction between my art and my life. The noise of life lives in his paintings. To boil Kenny down, the word would be compulsion. You could not take Kenny away from the paint. He paints on everything and anything, and he always did. I found that in the trash. Give him a prince's telephone, and it's going to become something else. A visionary. <laughs> I always felt a little different. I was kind of an outsider. New York at that time was the most creative place in the world. Kenny was very much part of the New York club scene, and that evolved into an art scene. Three artists, Scharf, Basquiat, and Herring, all came together at the same moment. Some kind of magnets drew them together. They brought a vitality that just hadn't been there. They just had this incredible energy. He and Keith were absolutely like brothers, but fiercely competitive. It was sort of love-hate. When Keith started doing his subway drawings, it just really exploded for him. It was like my work was invisible. He was obsessed, he had to make it. People thought I was obnoxious, because I probably was. But if you're screaming out all the time, you do things loudly, and that's who you are, what are you gonna do? I love the idea of taking the discarded, the unwanted, and turning them into something that I find attractive. There are a lot of people that do it for a minute and a half, and Kenny's been doing it for 40 years. Spending some time with Kenny is like an immersion into his whole aesthetic world. Marty, please. Bring it in. Artists have to rediscover endlessly. They can't just go forward doing what they're doing. They have to extend it. Many people think I'm crazy, and I think that's okay. <laughs>